Welcome to my first YouTube video regarding woodworking. This first one is going to be on my Alfie table for my table saw. Now there are numerous YouTube videos out there on this so basically all I intend on covering is five different special features I've built into this which are not real common on most Alfie tables that I think will help people either in designing or helping them through a dilemma and building their own. First thing I wanted on this outfit table was I wanted to be able to have it where it can fold and not take up much space. And here's a better view of just the table saw with the outfit table secured into its position. As you can see it, the outfit table really doesn't take but just about four more inches of uh, extra space to store along with it. The second thing, and probably one of the more important ones, is a dilemma I had and numerous other people have had too I believe and in regards to your rip fence. Your rip fence in this case I have a Porter cable table saw and like many others out there it secures to the front and to the back in order to lock in tight and placement of that outfit table if it's mounted to the table saw can interfere with the rip fence and I'm going to show you the technique I used and came up with to eliminate uh, having to change your rip fence or not being able to use it the way it was designed. I like clamping the front and the back. It makes it a lot more secure. And yet here's just another view up close on the uh, rip fence. As you can see right here, if I do it while holding the camera, it just moves right along that track. Lighting's not the best, I apologize. So we get down here and get a better view of it. So you can see how by moving that along in there, it's all about shaking this, that it misses. So it gives me plenty of clearance. I can remove my uh, rip fence real easy. Still have its use. While at the same time, have a nice outfit table without too much of a gap up here. From here to here, it's hard to tell, but on the film, that's about an inch and a quarter inch and a half and then of course the, about two inches to an inch and three quarters for the actual angle iron so a little over two inch gap right here but I have yet to have any problem with any wood or anything trapping in there and with that space right here any sawdust and stuff can still fall down through in here so it doesn't it's not make, making a trap location the next one is uh, how I mounted this to my table saw I did it without any drilling of any holes at all in the saw, use pre-existing holes, and I'll show you how that attachment goes. And this is probably some of the most critical part of this whole setup. It's my rail, what I call the rail system. It's basically half inch uh, birch plywood, doubled up, and it's it's real good and strong. It's hooked in. I have these little aluminum uh, pieces of metal here, so when the weight is down, the table is in a down position, it's going to have a tendency to want to pull from the top, so that's to help reinforce it so it doesn't pull out. Right here are my levelers, basically nothing more than a long bolt, a T-nut to help lock it in my up position, a little spacer since my sleeve comes down a little farther so I can get it without having to reach way up inside the spacer. Then an acorn nut. And then when I raise and lower, as you can see, it just goes up. So I want to lower it down. And it goes into a little T nut inside there that I have countersunk into the wood. These two screws are just to keep from all the, any pressure on here from keeping these two pieces of laminated boards from separating. So I just put two screws there. So that's basically the uh, rail system. And now I'll show you how I connect it to the table saw. What I did is I used that same type of wood, one half inch birch plywood. I made this little angled arm coming out. Used existing bolt holes, bought a uh, half inch longer bolt, replaced my original bolts that was in it right here and here with those bolts bolted that on. I doubled it here for the sole purpose of this would be the weak spot with the angle 
and also to give me a little more thickness for securing my rail rail to it. I did the same thing on the other side. This gets the whole thing, if you look right from this angle here, gets it down lower and away out from my uh, angle iron here that I need for my rip fence system. And now I'll give you a little closer a view of the sleeve with it mounted on the table saw. As you can see right here, I have the half inch birch plywood, three pieces, how I got set on the end. And then I did this way on the top portion for two reasons. One, it helps give me my little space I need for my rip fence. Well, at the same time, by overlapping this joint right here and then brad nailing down through the top and stuff with all the glue and it helps reinforce it so I, once again I don't, I don't have to worry about pulling action of the table saw or the weight of the outfeed table. And another requirement that I wanted in my building of my table saw is all table saws, outfeed tables at least, you can raise and lower on from the legs with little feet on the bottom on which I have on mine. That's fine but you're pretty much stuck with the design that you build as to the uh, feed side of the table. So I wanted to be able to adjust it so I can always fine tune it at the table over time so it start to sag or whatever. I wanted it to be able to be adjustable. So this is how I adjust it. And also, I'd like to, thought it would be a nice feature to be able to remove the table should the need arise and not have to use a lot of tools. So with my design, it's easily to remove the table from, the outfit table from the table saw. And if the need should arise, easy removal. It's that simple. Install it, it's just as simple. And then lastly, I had a special bonus once I finished building my table saw, outfit table. Had some extra wood left over, so I built this three foot long straight line taper jig, which is why you see the elongated uh, miter slot on this side. And that, staying with the uh, limited space concept, mounts under the table, so when I'm, when it's not in use, it's not in the way. Okay, this is the underside of the table, just to give you a quick, better look on my concept. Uh, down the, the base end right here, the part that hangs down, this is where the uh, farthest from the uh, table saw. I got two hinges from Rocker, I like these. I could have made them with just wood and, and uh, a bolt, but I like these because they, they have secure locks where they lock in the upper position. And you hold it like that, and they lock that way. So when I go to lower it, I, all you do is it's kind of hard to do it one-handed, and it locks it down. So I have them on the uh, for the legs. And as you see right here, we have a look for adjustment right here on both feet for adjusting the far side of the outfit table. And this part up here, I call my sleeve. It's on a four-foot piano hinge. This is what goes over what I call my rail system. And this is the two cutouts right here and one over there that goes over the uh, the arms that come out from the table saw. And it just slides right on over. I made a little extra deep. In this case here, it's about four inches deep. So that way, as I'm raising it, I've got a more, lot more stability inside there. And if you look inside, you can see what I call my strike plates. 
that's where the uh, my risers when I start adjusting to raise and lower it strikes this aluminum plate it was just an aluminum clipboard and I just cut it down use a polyurethane glue set it in there that way it wasn't digging into wood only and eventually bedding in there and always coming out of adjustment with weight and stuff this helps distribute it so I have one of those as you can see on both sides and something that's a little bit different I took my straight line taper jig so I can keep it handy at the same time out of my way when I don't need it it sits on the underside of my outfit table and everything's all closed up and it's underneath my uh, table saw it's basically out of the way if I need it I just have some uh, knobs that I screwed on on the other end it's nothing more than a small hinge doesn't take much to hold it in place and then that's what removes it and then I put little rubber stoppers evenly spaced so it applies pressure in the key locations throughout so once it's hooked in there and then to keep it from leaning from side to side when the table's up and this is not being utilized have these little uh, window blind uh, clips you get at Lowe's Home Depot I just got to turn them out of the way. And then I have little nylon stoppers in there, rubber stoppers, so it doesn't damage the edge. And a critical edge, the side that goes against the table saw, never rests up against anything. So when it's in a down position, all the weight is coming down to here on this side, and it keeps this protected. But this works real well. Holds it in place, and like I said, there's spare lumber, spare laminate for making my ta table saw top, Alfie table top. And of course, I did buy some extra stuff. I had some laying around, just some T tracks and a couple little hold downs, and from a little knob kit I used to have on an older jig. I hope that helps. I'll show you how this attaches also to your table saw if I haven't already.